Watch this video carefully, comparing the impact test on the left with the video on the right. See the difference? They may look nearly identical, but the video on the left is a crash test dummy. The video on the right, this is a human cadaver. This is kind of a standard uh, frontal impact test. Professor David Porta has participated in privately funded full cadaver tests. This is an example from an animal bone. He specializes in partial cadaver studies using the same machine shown here testing an animal bone for tests with human body parts. This person's ultimate gift of, of loaning their cadaver to us for the study is helping us fine-tune how this airbag works. But that person probably had no idea where his donated body would end up. Standard releases reference use in medical education or research, but not impact tests. No, the, the releases that are used at the schools that I've worked with are usually uh, very generic. NBC Action News obtained more than a dozen cadaver videos and searched government databases with hundreds of pictures and thousands of pages of reports. They detail more than 4,000 tests funded by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration using full cadavers or cadaver parts since 1981. This is Daddy's memorial service. When Bob Morris of Kansas City, Kansas, and years later his wife Helen both decided to donate their bodies to science, their kids supported the decision. They wanted to make the world a better place for everyone, to help. Like other families, they don't know whether their parents were used for anatomy class or medical research. They never knew research could mean impact tests. I can't picture my folks behind that type of testing. Meet cadaver FRM-124. He died of a breathing problem at 40 years old. Technicians unthawed his body and covered his face with a white hood and placed mittens on his hands shortly before the impact. Afterwards, x-rays were taken. Autopsies searched for crash-related injuries. Each injury was linked to the speed and gravity of the impact and the depth of penetration. Scientists used that to calibrate crash test dummies. In order to make the dummies realistic, the dummies have to be based on cadaver testing. This year, NHTSA funded cadaver testing at Duke, Medical College of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of Washington, and University of Virginia. Some get family permission, some don't. At UVA, prior to full cadaver testing, they contact surviving relatives to ask permission. If the next of kin objects, the cadaver is not entered in the program, but there are no national standards. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration doesn't require schools to get special cadaver donor consent. The agency declined an on-camera interview. Cadavers beyond the classroom isn't limited to impact tests. NASA has used cadavers to test spacecraft, and the Army has used cadavers for landmine safety research. It's like any other contract. If you sign for research and people use it for research, you got what you paid for. Kansas City-based author and pediatrician John Lantos is a leading expert in medical ethics. He says one must consider the societal good, like better safety belts, windshields, and airbags. A 1995 study by a leading cadaver researcher credited the tests with saving over 60 lives for every cadaver used. Although technically, Lantos believes the tests are medical research. Ethically, he says, the more details given to donors, the better. The more detailed and full disclosure would be better but a vague and sketchy disclosure isn't evil it's just slightly deceptive do you feel like you're deceiving them by not telling them grandma might be going into a concrete wall well no i, I personally don't feel like i'm deceiving them i mean i think somebody who has, has given this tremendous gift to a medical school I think if they really stop and think about it, they know their body is going to be damaged in some way. The Morris daughters don't know how their parents' bodies were used and aren't at peace with that general research release. No, I don't think I'd feel very comfortable about that. No. I think it's deceptive. Those cadavers never literally hit a concrete wall or anything else. The force comes solely from the impact sled's design to copy real crash scenarios in most tests are just individual body parts and all that information allows researchers to do more tests using crash test dummies to save more lives on the road and for now the issue of consent is left to each university well very interesting is there any way to tell if those ladies if their parents were used like that well it's, it's very unlikely 
Their bodies went to KU, and while investigating this story, we found no evidence that Missouri or Kansas schools provided specimens for automotive safety tests. What we did find at the University of Kansas, though, is now the subject of a second cadaver investigation that the University of Kansas, they have no records of where hundreds of their donated bodies went. We've uncovered a deal where a for-profit cadaver entrepreneur took bodies away from KU, paying the university about a million dollars.